Hey guys, for this edition of Refactoring UI, we're going to be taking a look at a design submitted by our new friend from Denmark, Peter Soom. It's a tool called WP Pusher, and it's basically a tool that lets you deploy WordPress plugins and themes directly from sites like GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab, instead of copying files from an FTP. It's pretty cool. And the page we're going to be refactoring is this checkout page. At first glance, this page may seem like a pretty simple design with not a lot to improve on, but we think there's a lot of quick wins in this that could improve both the hierarchy and the overall emotional experience. So I went ahead and made a pixel perfect version of the current design and sketch so we can go through the changes step by step. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is add labels outside of the input. Right now, each input is using placeholder text for the labels, and although this may clean things up a bit, it can be a little confusing on longer forms like this when users are quickly tapping through the form. Placeholder text labels might work on something smaller, like a signing form with just like a username and password field, but for longer forms, it's always a good idea to have labels outside of the input. That makes things a bit clearer, and now that we've removed the labels from the inputs, it allows us to use example placeholder text within the input as seen here. So the form is still looking a little bit crammed. Now, one way to make forms look a little more digestible is to divide it into multiple sections. So with this form, we can divide it into three sections. First would be the plan selections. Then we have some basic user information, like their name and email. And finally, we have the payment information, which already has a label on it. So we're gonna divide this by using liberal spacing and we're gonna use a very light two pixel border between each section. And this just gives the entire form a little more room to breathe. And since we already have a label for the payment information, we're just gonna go ahead and add labels to the other sections. And now that we have comfortable spacing and just a clear hierarchy being made with all the labels in all the sections, some of these additional borders are no longer necessary. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those just to tighten things up a bit. Now, one thing I like to do to make inputs stand out a bit more on a white background is to make them off-white or gray. This is nice because it eliminates the need for borders that make the form look sort of busy. It's just a nice clean treatment. And it also helps the inputs stand out much more while they still manage to look clickable. And because we made the background color gray now, we're going to make the placeholder text a bit darker just so it's a bit more legible. Okay, moving on. We're going to reduce the size of this email input as it's a little longer than it needs to be. You should use input length as an affordance. You want to create an expectation of how many characters should go into the field before the user starts typing. We're also going to tighten up this checkout form. Right now, it's using Stripe integration to collect your credit card information. And if you check out the Stripe Elements Examples page, they have examples where you can use a single input to collect all the credit card information. This cleans things up a bit and simplifies the form a little bit more, so we're going to apply that to the design as well. Now we're just going to move down to this support alert that you can see below the button. Right now it stands out a little too much, it's almost interfering with the purchase button itself. So we want to de-emphasize that a bit. And we're going to do that by removing the light blue background and making the text a darker gray. And just to balance things out, we're going to center the text below the button so it's aligned with the button text. And just to give it a little more visual interest, we're going to add an icon to the left of the text. This icon comes from my Heroicons UI set that you can get for free on my website at steveshoger.com. And we're just going to add some color to the icon by sampling the blue from the WP Pusher website. Okay, now to get to this page, you need to come from the marketing site by selecting a plan on the pricing section. But once you get here, you get completely removed from the rest of the site as there's no longer any navigation. So if you come to this page through a sales channel, like a promotional link, you don't have any context. So instead of just having the logo at the top of the form, we're going to add the navigation bar to the top of the UI. Okay, so we've made a lot of changes and it's already looking much cleaner and organized, but it's still looking a little bit uninspiring. So we're gonna see what we can do to make it a little bit more interesting. So one site I like to check out is pages.xyz. This is a gallery of well-designed websites organized by pricing pages, app pages, store pages, product pages, and checkout pages. And when I went to the checkout pages section, one of the first examples I saw was this example by an app called Lingo where they have this sidebar to showcase all of the plan's details. 
Although they don't use this design on their current checkout page, it's enough to inspire me to bring it back to the design we're working on. So what we're gonna do is add our own sidebar, but in this case, we're gonna add it on the right. So the focus of the page isn't entirely taken away from the form. And we're just gonna make it blue so it aligns with the homepage's primary color. And this is going to house all the plan details that can be seen on the pricing section, as it's always nice to be able to review your full plan when going through the checkup process, which is something the current design doesn't really offer. And this sidebar really puts a nice emphasis on that. We're also going to add a section that allows users to switch their plan. This will allow us to remove the plan section on the left containing the selection dropdown altogether, making the form a little shorter and a bit easier to digest. Okay, now I put the information on here with very little thought and with no attempt at creating a hierarchy. So we're gonna tidy this up a bit and we're gonna start with the price. We want to structure this so the value can be taken in at a glance. The currency and billing cycle are important, but we don't want them competing with the value which is going to grab the user's attention. Not only is this treatment attention grabbing, but visually it's just a bit more interesting. We're also going to italicize the renewal information to give it a subtle emphasis, as well as bold the values as they're the main differentiator between the plans. And instead of making these plan details just a simple bulleted list, we're going to give it some generic icons just to give, make it a bit more interesting. I'm going to use a check mark, but something generic like an arrow would also work for this. And finally, we're going to make this link actually look like a link. So we're going to bold it and underline it, but I'm going to make the underline a little more stylized than the standard text decoration. You can achieve this look in CSS by giving it a thicker bottom border with a negative margin. Okay, now earlier when I was skimming through some of the examples on pages.xyz, I also saw this example from Envision with a testimonial on the checkout. And I thought this was nice as it provides a little more reassurance to the user that they're making the right choice. So what we're gonna do is grab one of the quotes found on the homepage and add it to the checkout. And we're just gonna style it by making it a bit larger than the normal body text and italicizing it. Now there's just something about containing profile pictures in a circle that just makes them look good. And if you're working with images that clash with the rest of the design, a great way to make them blend in and look a little bit more cohesive is to desaturate them. Another thing that caught my eye when browsing pages.xyz is the numbers seen on this treehouse example. It's just a nice way to make these titles look a little bit more interesting and bring a sense of order to the design. And I'm also going to bold these titles so they're a little more balanced and just a little more prominent on the page. So we've already added a lot of extra vertical spacing, giving the form much more room to breathe, but we did it without touching the horizontal spacing, resulting in the left and right padding looking overly narrow. So we're going to increase that, making it a bit larger than the top and bottom padding of these sections. Another thing we should take a closer look at is the contrast ratios. When I made the blue sidebar earlier, I simply sampled the blue used on the website without considering the contrast ratios when used with white text. Now, this is a nifty little menu bar app I like to use made by Matty Smith and Sam Sauce that allows you to quickly check contrast ratios. And it appears that this does not meet the requirements for small text, so we're gonna make this blue just a bit darker. And while we're at this, we're going to double check that green. And it looks like it fails completely, so we're going to make this a bit darker and we're going to change the hue so it's a bit bluer so it blends in a bit with the brand color. And while we're on the subject of color, one thing I like to do when working with cool colors like this is to saturate my grays with a bit of blue just to make the page feel a little more glued together. And in this case, what we're gonna do is take the brand hue and just saturate the current grays with it. So on an HSB color picker, the saturation intensity might look something like this. So as the grays get darker, I'm going to increase the intensity of the saturation. And what this does is sort of changes the temperature of the whole page, making it a bit cooler. Now, I like that this design is contained in this card design to help it pop off the page a bit, but I just wanna give it a little more depth. So instead of surrounding it with a border, we're going to introduce a box shadow. Now, I've always admired Stripe's design and 
I especially like the way they use box shadows. There's just something about them that feels natural. And if you take a closer look at how they achieve this, you'll see that they have two layered shadows. One that's a bit saturated with a larger blur and a dark one that's shorter. So we're going to give this design a similar treatment. And finally, we're going to update the typeface. Right now, the design is using a font called Railway, which is a great font, but since the logo is using Gotham by Heffler Fonts, I thought it would be appropriate to use it everywhere else as it's a much more premium typeface. Now, typefaces aren't necessarily transferable, meaning you may need to adjust the size and weights depending on the font you're switching to. Okay, so that pretty much wraps everything up, so let's just compare our new design with the one we started with. If you want to check out this design in Sketch, I've included a link to download the Sketch files in the description. You can also check out the product WP Pusher at WPPusher.com. And if you enjoy this video and want to receive updates when more content like this is published, be sure to sign up at refactoringui.com.